and welcome to my channel Tahara Loves Pilates. I'm Tahara, I love Pilates and I want to share that with you. So this video is five more beginner Pilates exercises for you to try at home. I say five more because I've already posted a video showcasing five exercises that I thought would be great as a start. So you can find that video here. Or if you've already done this one, that's fantastic. Let's get started with five more. So exercise number one is arm arcs. So we're going to be lying down in a moment. Um, I'm here in my living room, just somewhere comfortable for you to lay. And we're going to be reaching our arms forwards and backwards. But just something to think about before we get into it. The arm doesn't necessarily just start and stop here at this shoulder joint. We've got your collarbones at the front. There's a few joints there that allow movement. We've got your shoulder blades at the back, kind of like angel wings again, just allowing that sliding, gliding motion as they kind of hug at the back of the rib cage. Um, so after we can get quite stiff here and it's just a lovely exercise just to lubricate those joints um, and to get the arms moving so let's lie down um, this position I call semi supine arms are just relaxed by the sides of the body so I just want you to reach towards the feet and just feel the arms slightly starting to lift up off the floor and continue to reach them up and overhead and just reach as far as is comfortable. So your arms might not reach as far as mine do. Just stop where you feel maybe a bit of tightness, where it feels enough. As you reach the arms forwards and backwards, a few tips to think about the rib cage. Very common for the rib cage to control the movement of the arms. The rib cage to flare and reach. And what we want to be able to do is to move the arms independently of our trunk. So imagine a bowl of water resting here on the rib cage. It's full to the brim. We don't want any spilling towards the chest. I'm just going to demonstrate with one arm. And you can do this too. Place a hand against the ribs. And as you reach your other arm up and overhead, see if you can feel the rib cage maybe wanting to come up. You can see that arch appearing at the back of the body. See if you can keep it down. So you can really maximise the stretch. Let's go three times more, reaching up and overhead. And back down. And for now, just breathe as comfortable as you like. There's different breathing patterns. We can add to this to make it more assistive or just to give us some resistance. But just have a feel of this reaching of the arms your collarbones at the front of the body, your shoulder blades at the back of the body. And those are your arm arcs. Exercise number two, toe taps. So we're lying again in supine, arms are relaxed by the sides, and your pelvis is in a comfortable neutral position. So if you think back to the first video, the first exercise we did, pelvic clocks, we want our pelvis to be somewhere in between our 12 o'clock, which was that marble tipping towards the pubic bone, that large gap between your lower back and the surface you're lying on, and your six o'clock position where your lower back is kind of pressing into the floor. So somewhere in the middle, you should still have that natural curve at the lower um, end of your spine. And again, arms relaxed by the sides. We're gonna bring our right leg up to tabletop position. So the knee is just hovering over your hip socket and we're keeping our knee fixed in this 90 degree angle. We're going to take a breath in and as we breathe out, we're tapping the toe down towards the floor and breath in to return the leg back to tabletop. So it's just this forwards and backwards motion of the leg. Aiming on keeping that connection to the core every time you're breathing out. It's just that sensation of hugging belly button to spine. So nothing intense, just a drawing in feeling. And let's repeat that on the left side. So bring the right leg down, left leg to tabletop. Inhale. And as you exhale, tap that toe down and back up again. 
So again, the idea of this one is to keep your pelvis stable. So I'm just going to reach my arms up to the ceiling so you can have a look at my spine. As the toe taps down towards the floor, it might cause the pelvis to want to tip into that 12 o'clock direction. And as the knee returns back up, it might encourage the pelvis back into that 6 o'clock position. So the aim is to find and keep your neutral against this forwards and backwards motion of the leg. Everything between the crown of the head and the tailbone, so the very base of your spine, stays fixed. And the core's working really hard to help keep that stability. And that's your toe taps. Exercise number three, the bridge. So again, we're lying in our supine position. Feet are in parallel, so they're in line with your knees, with your hip sockets. We're standing into the feet and you should start to feel the pelvis become lighter and lift away from the floor. So just continue to lift up until you're in this sort of slope position. And on the way down, we're really massaging the spine. Almost think of the spine as though it's a string of beads and you're setting the beads down one at a time. Standing into the feet to lengthen up. Feel maybe a bit of a thigh stretch, hips pushing upwards towards the ceiling. And a really lovely stretch of the back on the way down. So we're really working our glutes here. There's no real need to squeeze the glutes as you push up. The glutes are already working hard to maintain the body in this position. You might feel some work in the back of the legs as well, your hamstrings. Breathing pattern here. Breathe out and activate that core on the way up. You can take a breath in here at the top and really feel the spine lengthen. And then as you breathe out, right from the base of the throat, bring in the spine down, bone by bone. Let's go once more. And that's the bridge. Exercise number four, the clamp. So we're on our side for this one, but we're still actually in the same position. So by that I mean, supine is feet, pelvis, head, neck and shoulders all in one line. We've got the floor to kind of line all of these body parts up. And we're gonna turn that onto its side. So we still want to keep that alignment. So bend the arm in and make a little pillow for the head. And we're going to glue the feet together for this one. Just have a little bit of space between the side you're lying on. So we're lifting away from the floor. We're not going to sink in and collapse in the ribs. But we're just going to have a little bit of a lift here. And again, that will help to keep your pelvis aligned and stacked. So you can place a hand on the pelvis or in front of the chest, wherever feels comfortable. But all we're doing is opening at the hip to separate the knees and closing at the hip to bring the knees back together. The feet stay glued. And it's just a small motion. So think back to your pelvic clock. That's why that exercise is so good. We can think here about our three o'clock and nine o'clock now. As this knee lifts, the pelvis might want to rock back too much. So this would be our marble tipping towards our nine o'clock. If you keep that marble in the center, Keep your pelvis nice and stable so we can really just allow the work where it's needed in the glute area. Still thinking about the breath and the core here, always important. As we're moving away from the centre of the body, we can use our breath out. That's where the work is. And our breath in to return the knees back down. And again, your hand can go wherever it's comfortable, just resting in front of the chest, relaxing on the hip. And sometimes I like to place the hand on the bottom 
and feel the thigh bone sinking in to the pelvis. It really is just a tiny movement. The smaller you move sometimes in Pilates, the more you can feel those muscles connecting. Let's do one more. Lovely, and let's repeat that on the other side. So just place a hand in front of the chest. Use the arms to push yourself up. Let's swing the legs on round. Sun's come out and stack the body back up. So when you're coming into side lying positions, it can be tricky to feel where you are in space because there's nothing behind you. Could use the sofa, line your back up against it. Just takes a bit of practice to know and feel where you are in space. Again, be careful of these ribs that we're not sinking into the side we're lying on, but we're just lifting, keeping that alignment, keeping our hips stacked. Opening at the hip to lift the knee, closing at the hip to join the knees back together. Look at that sunshine. I should have done this video in the garden. Just a small movement. Think about your three o'clock and your nine o'clock again. So we've not got too much twisting or tipping of the pelvis backwards, but we're using the core again to keep that pelvic stability while our glutes get some work. Upper body's nice and relaxed, meaning we've not got any tension in the neck or the shoulders. And it's just that teeny tiny movement where the thigh bone sinks into the hip socket and out again. Last one and down and that's your clam. Exercise number five, the chest lift. So we're back lying down in supine. I'm going to lie the other way so I'm not blinded by this gorgeous sunshine. We're interlacing the fingers and placing the hands at the back of the head. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, curling up into that chest lift. And breath in as you return the head down. Breath out to curl up. And breath in to send the head down. So very important not to sort of crunch the head squash the chin into the chest keep some space maybe imagine you're holding an apple or something between your chin and chest to keep that space and it's just the spine that we're moving the breath pattern really helps as we breathe out our lungs are deflating giving us lots of space to come up into this chest lift motion. As we breathe in, helping us to send the body back down. Exhale forwards. Inhale back. This exercise often comes with complaints of neck tension. So that's where we're using the hands. You can feel the arms with this exercise. The head's very heavy don't want to be using the neck to come forwards we can nod the head forwards and backwards and it can have zero effect on the abdominals so this is where the head neck and shoulders kind of remain passive and we're really just using our abdominals our core work our breath to help facilitate this exercise breathing out really dropping the ribs to come forwards and breathing in to send the head back down. Let's do three more. Really use the breath. And that's your chest lift. 
So there you have it, five more beginner Pilates exercises for you to continue practicing. Thank you so much for joining me, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments how you got on with the exercises. Um, subscribe to my channel, it's brand new, I'm going to keep on adding more things for you to try and practice. Um, like the video as well, that's going to help other people to find me too. Um, look out for the next video because what I'm going to do is add them together and make a little beginner's routine for you to follow along with. Thank you again for joining me and take care of yourselves.